I just want to preface this video saying that if you're seeing this, it means that my store has officially been updated and is open again. So if you're interested in any stickers, prints, or notebooks, uh, feel free to check out the pinned comment or the links in the description to access my store. Once again, I always appreciate your guys' wonderful and tremendous support on the store and on my channel, so I really do appreciate it. So back to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So. Um, I got suggestions for me to try out um, a program called Infinite Painter. I'm gonna actually just do a bunch of testing. I did do some testing in general, just finding brushes that potentially I like. I'm gonna try to find a brush that I like to sketch with and then potentially ones for coloring and or rendering so we can do a full complete piece. But uh, I'm gonna do that on time lapse so we can kind of skip going through uh, me just testing a bunch of brushes, seeing what each brush does, and all that generic stuff. But during the time-lapse portion, I'm going to try to explain what I look for in brushes because I think everyone's taste in brushes differ. So I'm going to do some testing, and I'll see you guys in a bit, and we'll do some in real time footage where I will talk about the process while I'm working. So while I'm kind of like testing out and trying to feel out the program a little bit, I am going to be putting this part in time lapse, but pretty much for the rest of the video, I will make sure that is more in real time and we can go through more of the illustration making process. But for now, because I am not familiar with the layout of everything, as well as like trying to learn different settings and just like the capability of the program when it's not in the pro mode, um, I wanted to just take some time just to play around. So I'm looking at the brushes, I'm trying to get a good feel of what brushes that I would like to use. I already immediately found that um, a lot of the pencil brushes I really already like. Um, they behave very similarly to other programs that I've used. Um, the ones that I used the most I believe were the 6B and the Proco pencil when I was doing just like test sketching. But then for the other brushes. I'm not sure if I'm gonna link them down below or anything because I'm not sure exactly how to share those per se, but I was trying to fiddle around with the settings so that we could replicate something that I would like, which is a brush that does not have any blending, but has a good versatility of getting kind of like hard and soft edges, as well as being easy to layer up, but also getting opaque color without blending, like I mentioned earlier. So once we get back into the just normal narration, I'll go over some of the other stuff during the illustration process for you guys. Okay, so for general testing, I think I found something that I like. And I just noticed that for the layers, you only have a maximum of three layers unless you go for the pro version, which you have a maximum of 80, but I think three is enough for me. So uh, I think that is what we're going to do. I'm going to turn on the time lapse. Um, what else is here? Color, I'm going to change. I love that it has these kind of neutral tones for the paper. So I'm going to choose one of these. I think I was using this one because I do like the warmer, the warmer color. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit more accurate. So for the brushes, so I put them into my favorites. The ones that I actually really liked um, is the charcoal stick, 6B pencil, and the clay roller. So I'm going to show you guys the settings that I changed though. So charcoal stick, I didn't change anything except for if you go into paint, I think I changed the flow to 60 and Everything else here should be the same. So blur is at zero, pull is at zero, and flow is at 60. 6B pencil, I did not change anything other than the the size, I believe. I think the size range, but I think that's like up to your own preference. The next thing I changed is the clay roller. And in paint, once again, I changed the flow. I don't know if I'm going to change the blur and the pull. Okay, let's start off with the 6B pencil. I'm going to choose the usual colors. This is also a little bit uh, strange, but I guess it keeps like the hue. Oh, is it this color? Wait, why does it do that? Interesting. I'm sure it does a purpose, uh, but I feel like I'm so used to using programs that it doesn't move. Okay, so let's get into the actual drawing portion for today's video. So now that we kind of got the testing a little bit kind of out of the way and I've kind of modified a brush or two so that I can work 
a little bit more easily but I definitely recommend that if you're ever trying out like a new program especially like digitally for drawing you know give a good kind of like play around with the program to see like how things are laid out checking your options such as like me trying to figure out um the settings personally as well as I think I changed the like pressure sensitivity curve and stuff all um off camera just because I was doing like a lot of back and forth and it's very um tiring to look at in my opinion I also changed the gestures or like anything that they had available to tailor to my needs like I had I believe the double tap really quickly would help flip the canvas back and forth because I noticed it did lack a like a visible button to do that very easily and I'm very used to procreate which has that easily like easily accessible for me because of how I've already have my little layout so like I said if you're new to your program figure out what you like or if you're familiar with a different program try to make the new program um, maybe mirror or do similar things to your old program so you don't feel too scared of using the new program or feeling too unfamiliar so for sketching i believe i was using the proco pencil or something like that i recorded this like a few days ago so i don't remember specifically what exactly i used but i'm pretty sure i mentioned it earlier and later on in the video i will switch the coloring brushes a little bit because even though i wanted to make sure to probably not adjust any of the settings for the brushes i didn't stick with that because I wanted to make sure that I could replicate how I draw in my kind of like little process and I want to be able to do it comfortably in the program. I'm not going to try to restrict myself by not changing any of the settings if that makes sense. So like I said, if you have settings you like, try to try to figure out what exactly of the brush properties that you enjoy and try to replicate that into the new program. So for me, usually I talk about um I think I'm not too picky when it comes to like sketching brushes. Anything that resembles similar to like a pencil or anything like that, I will be 100% happy with. Um, but I know in like in Paint Tool Sci, in Clip Studio Paint, in Procreate, I definitely go with more of a kind of like a round brush that is able to have a little bit of variation in terms of width, like line width, and it tapers a little bit more. But I also like the ability to have. Um, Kind of like a pencil that is able to do bold marks because i usually like using the eraser to be the same brush as well so it's easy for me to erase like any dark marks quite easily but for painting I'm a, i am a little bit more particular so actually i forgot to mention this we're drawing team Nutty today from genshin impact just because i thought it'd be fun to draw someone a little bit more familiar and i always wanted to draw more of team Nutty. i feel like the one that i didn't um, Ibis paint a while back. I don't really like his demeanor in that one. He looks a little bit too like childish, a little bit too like baby face kid ish like. And we know that he's a little bit more of that sassy, a little bit of a. I don't know how to explain his personality, but it's definitely not how I portrayed him in that image. So I would like to redraw him one day. But just for this, it's kind of more of a self indulgent drawing. So we're drawing Teen Nutty, kind of side profile. I'm um, gonna add some lighting and stuff so we can do similar effects to how I usually work in Procreate. So, yeah, color scheme is probably gonna be somewhat light and vibrant so we can mimic um, usual color schemes or lighting situations that I often do or default to when I work digitally, anyways, on the iPad. So, that is what we're going to do. Um, but back to the brushes. So, I kind of did like a brief run through of looking through the brushes and doing like an initial small test here and there for each of the brushes and I was trying to find one that I would like to use but I did notice that I feel like if you're more attached to or like a lot of like traditional medium or like those really texture brushes that you get from like traditional mediums maybe like charcoal oil paints paint rollers and anything like that there's a lot of those kinds of brushes in their repertoire but it's harder for me because i was trying to look for just a basic round brush now maybe i didn't search in the right place to look for them but I just wanted something that was like super basic that I could kind of manipulate a little bit more easily. And you can see that instead of like a simple round brush that I would use, I think I used a paint roller and a like a charcoal brush 
for the coloring stage for the most part and then later on I switched because I found something close enough to a round brush where I started to adjust the settings because for me usually when I do like the the initial colors where I'm planning out like values as well as like the little bit of the lighting source but I'm mostly, like, I'm mostly putting down the colors that I want to be on the canvas and for me I definitely don't want a lot of like color pulling or anything like that or blending because I like to rely a little bit more on opacity which I then figured out I believe in this program the opacity is a little bit differently behaved compared to I think brushes in Procreate I think Procreate has opacity kind of similar to like flow and opacity together so I actually changed mostly the flow in the brushes if I wanted to have that range of being able to go really soft to really dark um, for one brush so yeah Okay, so let's go back to the process of drawing. So I am limited to three layers, which I personally don't find it too much of an issue. So I think I mentioned it earlier that the amount of layers will depend on your canvas size and resolution. But um, if you do not have the pro version, this is the free version that I'm currently using. Um, your layers are limited to three layers and like I said, I, it's not big of a problem for me because usually while I'm working, I will merge as I go if I really need to. So I had enough of a layer, like enough layers so that I could have one layer dedicated to the background. Now if you really want to, you could definitely leave the paper um, as the background and not have any like other, I don't know how to explain it, like other colors on the actual paper layer but you have three additional layers to that. So I had one for the background, one for my sketch, and then one for my actual colors, which we are doing now. So similar to how I work in Procreate, I did change the sketch lines to multiply, and then I applied kind of like a lightish brown color, and we are now set to do coloring. So for coloring, I did do the background first. I used the paint roller. I didn't really mind the texture, so I kind of went willy-nilly with doing a variation of blues to white. And then after that, we start to add in the colors for Teen Nutty. So for Teen Nutty, I wanted to keep things simple, so I'm not doing anything with like intense lighting. And if I do decide to do that, I am going to do it with another layer. And we'll have access to another layer once I finish the coloring and merge my sketch with my colors and then we can add a new layer to do any kind of like blend mode effects. But like I said, if you're interested in potentially upgrading Infinite Painter, I highly recommend you check out what's available first because or even like if you're not interested in upgrading, it's a good idea to check out what they have available first because I noticed there's some things that were missing from like um, settings and stuff that I use in Procreate or even in Ibis Paint that are not available because this is not the pro version. So I believe there's like some transformation tools. I think there's some hue saturation settings and stuff that is a little bit kind of locked behind the paywall. And I think some other ones is like Gaussian Blur is not available for you to use, which I use quite a bit, especially for backgrounds and effects. And I'll show you guys kind of like a workaround if you're doing kind of like smaller objects that you're trying to blur. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But you can see I'm just going through and doing majority of the coloring. And like I said, I'm going to merge the sketch with the color so we can free up a layer and slowly add any kind of blend mode effects such as multiply or addition to add any further lighting or just general color changes and color shifts if needed. Um, I think for the most part, most of the blend modes that I use are not behind the pro, like behind a paywall, so you can have kind of free access to that. I'm trying to think what else did I- oh, let's talk about that. Okay, this thing. I think in the beginning, you guys would have saw that when I was moving the color wheel, the little thing that says like oh this is the color you've selected would move along as I move around the color wheel which I found super strange I don't know if it's a glitch um but for some reason while I was coloring Tinari it stopped doing that and I don't know if it's maybe the brush or if it's like I don't actually don't know if it maybe it's a glitch or something 
it stopped moving like that and behaved how it usually behaves, which is like the little, um, I guess like in that case, the value wouldn't change. So that if you were to go around the wheel, you'd be just changing the hue and the value and the saturation would stay where it is, which I personally like, um, especially when I do color and I want to do like slight color adjustments, I would like to just change the hue so we can check out the color difference. So it was a little bit annoying, but the little part was moving so often. But for some reason it stopped. And at some point, I don't know if it's going to be shown in the video later, but it does come back. So I'm wondering whether or not it's the brush I'm using that changes it. I kind of hope it isn't, um, but I do want to figure out if there's an answer to that. So if anyone knows um, or uses Infinite Painter, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I think maybe if I ever use this program like ever again, I will try to look it up and figure that out so it doesn't really mess with my color selection when I'm coloring. So, um, like I said, I think I mostly use the charcoal stick. I think that's what it's called and the clay roller to do the majority of the coloring now the color stick i think already didn't really have any blending capabilities or like pull or anything like that so other brushes that i'm going to look at a little bit later i am going to try to turn off any of like that pull because the pull i think is what has to do a little bit with the blending of colors it's kind of like pushing and pulling through the colors to one another depending on the direction of your uh, strokes and I was trying to make sure that none of that was kind of turned on because I wanted to be able to shade and color and get my color variations depending on the how hard and how light I pressed. Now, another thing that I didn't really like about Infinite Painter is the kind of the layout of it is just a little bit weird. So I always like the fact that Procreate is a little bit more minimalistic. Ibis Paint has a little bit more of that feel of a digital program on desktops, which I think is a good transition for you guys if you are looking to transition from maybe a drawing program from your laptop or your computer and you're working maybe on your phone now. The layout's very um, easily accessible and stuff. Like everything, you can probably tell what is what um, for the most part. But the problem is for me, I definitely like having more screen space when I'm working on the iPad. So I definitely like it, like Procreate's interface where everything's kind of hidden. But the problem is, is that I found it a little bit annoying that I couldn't have the size and opacity just available. More so the size of the brush. I don't like opacity is kind of like, you kind of set it and forget it for some of the brushes. So I don't really think that's much of a problem, but I changed brushes quite or not brushes, change the size of the brush quite often that I find myself having to have this little side window open. So you guys look at the, the little menu on the left. There's like a minus and then like a little box thing at the very top of that menu. One of them allows you to have um, just like the brushes available, but then once you click back on the canvas, it kind of hides itself again, like it minimizes. But if you have, if you click like one of the little top buttons, it kind of drops down the stroke. Um, and I don't know what the bottom ones say on the bottom, like but, but it's basically the settings. So for the settings, it was easier for me to have that open so that I could have the size readily available. I know there's like a little small dot um, as well on the menu on the side. Um, that you can click to change i think both the opacity and the size but once you click on the canvas it does disappear and i find that a little bit annoying to have to fix because on ibis paint and procreate both the opacity and the size are just fixed onto your interface like they don't disappear they don't hide or anything and i find that a little bit more convenient um, having this whole menu propped up is a little bit inconvenient I wish there was a way for you to make it like a floating thing so you can put it somewhere else or just have the size and opacity just available. Now, like I said, I don't have the pro version, so I'm not sure if this is like a pro feature or if I'm doing something wrong and there is a way to like make sure a window is kept open. Maybe I just have to look for that. But if you guys, any of you guys know, then do let me know because if I is just kind of like a user problem, then I, I don't want to complain about it. Um, the other thing I made a mistake about, though, was the fact that when I was working on the illustration 
on the layers, like in the settings, there's something saying that turn this off during time lapse. Now, I thought it meant turn off the layer menu in time lapse so it won't show me like flicking the layers on and off or something like that. Because I didn't know exactly how this program was going to record the screen or record the process. And I didn't realize that it turned off the entire layer for the entire process. And I tried turning it back on and it didn't, it didn't fix it. So apologies that at the very end, if you guys are seeing the time lapse, the lines just are basically disappeared once I start coloring. So hopefully if you're watching the video, you know that I kept the sketch during my coloring phase and that it doesn't, like I'm not painting without the lines, if that makes sense. So I kind of skipped over the entirety of the kind of like coloring phase along with the merge and the effects. So my usual process is once I put in majority of the colors in its rightful places and have most of it kind of like uh, not too too rough but not clean because usually we have to do like a rendering phase and a cleanup phase for me. So. I had all the colors established and then I merged the sketch after I changed the sketch color to be a little bit more appropriate to everything else and you can do so by locking the layer and coloring over your lines and then I merged it and then I have a new freed up layer. So I used that one to add a addition layer I believe, if not it's called the luminosity layer. So I could add a little bit of a highlight or rim lighting on the right side of Tinari and then after that. I think I merged it again and then added a very little bit amount of multiply in some areas for Tinari to kind of push the shadows just a little bit more. So once I was done with that blend mode, I would immediately merge it to the merged sketch and color layer and then we can just keep on freeing up that one last layer for myself. So. I kind of knew that I wanted to do some kind of effects on top of Tinari at the very end, so I needed to free up that one layer anyways. So my free layers will be at the very end is obviously the paper, which does not count in your free layer count. Um, then you have the background, which I like to keep separate from the figure or whatever's in the foreground. Then I have Tinari, pretty much all entirely colored and rendered at some point and then the last layer will be any foreground elements or any kind of effects or anything like that and if i really wanted to do like more color adjustments or more blend modes i would just keep basically taking my top layer and merging it to the bottom but i think if i were to do that with the effects i would actually have to merge my background and tinetti together to make sure that the effect of the blend mode doesn't only affect tinetti and then affects both tinetti and the background together so hmm. I think if you are not too familiar on how blend modes work or, and the idea of like merging things, I highly recommend playing around with it though so that you can test that out. Okay, so I made a new layer and we are going to be doing the typical leaves or like little um, foliage that kind of passes through the wind over and I usually do this a lot um, for my pieces. So I like to usually set that to addition and you can see that I just made kind of leaf shapes with the selection tool. I'm picking a fairly light color and then we're gonna just gonna fill this in and then we're gonna change the blend mode to luminosity I believe and this is when I realized that there is no Gaussian blur at least I couldn't find it in the menus and stuff and I think it's because I need to have the pro version because I think the pro version opens up many more settings like that so we're gonna do something different. So I decided to take the smudge tool or a blending tool that they have and just do the little edges ever so slightly on some of them and a little bit more on other ones. It kind of creates a little bit more movement and then some of them it require like it kind of makes it look a little bit more blurred, which kind of helps with the sense of depth and movement. So something nice about this thing is it also likes to pull the color a little bit so it's able to make it a little bit more wispy at some of the ends and I think it kind of helps. Um, but yeah, the next portion of the video is actually, also I was eating blueberries at the time, uh, is that I wanted to find something similar to the 6B pencil in Procreate because this is one of my favorite pencils to use or brushes to use when sketching and just doodling in general where I don't have to worry about color, I don't worry about anything else other than values and lines and everything like that. 
so uh, I was kind of debating between the 6B pencil and the Proco pencil. Now I think in the end I decided to use the Proco pencil. Um, it just had a little bit something more I liked about it than the 6B pencil and it behaves very similar to the ones in Procreate anyways so I didn't find it too hard to use and it was very just simple lovely texture and I liked the ability to work from dark to light or not dark to light light to dark um, with this pencil so it was able for it was easy for me to basically use a little bit more pressure color in a larger area kind of thing so yeah and it has like the tilt function as well similar to a lot of the other pencils in infinite painter they have like the ability to tilt so you can do and shade kind of like larger areas so you can see i'm using that a lot for some of the darker areas for masaki's jacket i'm sketching masaki by the way because it was easier for me to think about uh just simple doodles so that i didn't really have to think about like character design or anything like that so i just wanted to focus on drawing masaki adding values in some areas playing around with the cross hatching and any of the tilt for the pencil so yeah, that's been kind of what I've been enjoying more recently anyways, is sketching like this. So it's kind of nice to be able to do this in the program for Infinite Painter as well. So maybe if you're just using Infinite Painter, don't want to upgrade to the Pro version, this is definitely a good way to maybe do like digital uh, sketching on the go if you need to. And maybe you don't want to like get Procreate or Ibis Paint, you can definitely use Infinite Painter for this because I think they're traditional like sketching brushes even like their painting brushes and stuff they mimic stuff very well um they have wonderful texture and i think they have very interesting properties to their brushes so definitely think it's a great program am i going to use it as my main program probably not um procreate's still my favorite and i just have more familiarity with it especially with the layout and just like the interface and stuff so definitely probably stick with procreate but i do like infinite painter quite a bit but yeah those are the two drawings or canvases that we worked on today tinetti and the masaki sketches so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and i will talk to you guys next time bye